five bags. Is it five bags? I don't know if it's five bags. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Yes, I am aware that there is a huge bun on my head. I cannot be bothered to do my hair. I haven't been really had any haven't had the energy to straighten my hair but i've had the energy to exercise still while pregnant so that's good i'm struggling to fit it into frame but so please forgive me um this video today is going to be the bags that i regret selling i believe that there is six yeah there is six on the list but a couple of them are kind of like a little bit of a bit of a technicality to do with why i regret it um now first and foremost Welcome back if you are already subscribed to this channel, but if you aren't, I would love if you would hit that subscribe button below so you can see all my videos all about luxury and fashion and a little bit about beauty. Um, I post videos every Wednesday and every weekend, so also hit that bell so you can be notified when I do upload my next video. So this video, like I said, it is the bags that I regret selling. Um, kind of sucks when you have to sit down and, and say, admit that you regret something. I tend to say that uh, I live my life with no regrets, but quite logically, there are always going to be things that you look back on and go, oh, I could have done that differently. I should have done this instead, but it is what it is. Um, we cannot change the past. We can only try and be better for the future. So even though I'm saying that these bags, I regret selling them, at the end of the day, Things happen for a reason. They were sold for a reason at the time that seemed like the right thing to do. And they've perhaps put me on the bag collection pathway that I am on now. So yeah, it kind of like uh, it was meant to happen so I could have what I have now, something like that. You know what I mean? Trying to not be so um, pessimistic about the fact that I regret these bag sales. So let's try and make this video short and sweet and I'm going to start off with something that immediately sprung to mind and um, whenever I see this bag getting sold on the resale market for a very high premium I'm like why did I sell it and it is the Louis Vuitton and it's the Cherries, Cherries? I'm not sure how you say it. it's the when they had the little two cherry icons on them um and it's the speedy 25 i had a speedy 25 in the louis vuitton cherries uh limited edition line i cannot believe it yes i own this bag and i actually owned this bag when i was about 16 years old i um i was already working i've been working from already just before 15 years old and i was working because i love shopping i love fashion i love luxury and i saved up and i bought the louis vuitton uh cherries speedy 25 i had bought it um from i think i bought it pre-loved from japan or something like that um yeah i didn't buy it brand new from the boutique because the collection had already been around but it would st was still sort of there was still quite a lot of them still circulating so the price that i had paid would probably only and because the speedy 25 was also much less before louis vuitton was much less um 15 years ago so <laughs> so yeah i think i only paid maybe about maybe 700 australian dollars for that maybe 600 australian dollars something around that kind of line i pretty much paid um what the a little bit, maybe a little bit above the retail price. I can't remember exactly because I know that when I, when I bought my Speedy 35 when I was um, 21, I think that was $700. So I think um, if I bought that six years later and that was a Speedy 35, then the Louis Vuitton uh, Speedy 25 and the Cherries must, I must have paid slightly over retail for it, but it was in the Cherries pattern. I sold it because um, I found that that pattern was like uh, just too much. I wasn't able to kind of wear it with everything. It was very like bold and striking and I was quite young and I didn't want to be sort of too flashy with the pattern. So I used it, enjoyed it, but then I decided to sell it and buy something else. Obviously now looking back, I totally regret that because I see these bags selling now for like more than $2,000 Australian and I, if I had kept it, yeah, yeah, I would have been making a really nice profit on it. Plus, if I had kept it, I would have still, still been able to look at the bag and enjoy the bag and appreciate um, the fact that it was a limited edition creation that was never brought back again. So yeah, I definitely, definitely regret selling that bag. The next item that I regret selling, I'm not sure of the actual model name of this bag, but it was a Chanel bag and it was a Chanel bag. Uh, it was a black caviar shoulder bag. 
it was kind of like a drop tote so it was a shoulder bag I'm going to include a picture because I'm sure I'm going to be able to find it online. And it was like an op it was kind of like a bucket bag, but not in the bucket shape because it was in a narrow sort of shape. And it had three gold CCs at the bottom of the bag. It was like a vintage bag, so I don't know what the name of it was. But um, yeah, I, I think I paid around about $1,000 Australian for that bag. That was quite a lot of money. That was probably the most I ever paid for a luxury handbag pre-age, pre like... 18 I think I got that around about 18 19 so around about that age um, anything that was a thousand dollars or just over a thousand dollars was quite a lot of money it still is quite a lot of money but back then that was the biggest purchase I ever made was that Chanel bag um, and I I enjoyed using it for a little short period of time but then I ended up selling it because I wanted to make a profit on it and I felt a bit guilty having spent that much money I was really young. I needed to save. Um, I needed to save to go and, and upgrade my car because my car that I owned was um, like a second-hand car. I think at the time I owned maybe. I think it was a Subaru Liberty. Actually, no. I think I was saving to buy a Subaru Li Liberty. So that's why I decided to sell the bag and I made a profit on it. But looking back, I wish I had sort of just kept it. Worked a bit harder to be able to keep that bag because I definitely could utilize that bag in my collection right now and I see them selling in the resale market those kind of ones and there's another style as well that's more like the bucket bag more like a bucket shape and they're selling for easily over like $1,500 Australian so I know I only paid around about the very low thousand maybe only about a thousand dollars or thousand one hundred or less so um, yeah looking back I do regret selling that bag the next bag that I regret selling is um, actually a bag that made it to my worst luxury purchases so it's a worse luxury purchase because I shouldn't have bought it in the first place and I learned my lesson from it. However, I regret selling it because I made I lost money on it and I should have held on to the bag for a little bit longer to sell it later or perhaps I could have actually ended up enjoying the bag um, and grown to love the color. And that is the Chanel Trendy CC, the small size in beige. It was called a beige Claire, but it wasn't really beige. It was like a salmon -y kind of beige. It was more like on the pinky side. So that was the reason I sold it is that I felt that the color really didn't, wasn't really neutral. It didn't go with everything. It was more like a colored bag, not a neutral color. That's how I felt about it. Um, but I lost, I think, I can't remember exactly how much money I lost now, but I think it was at least around about two to three thousand dollars I know I said it in my worst luxury per worst luxury purchases video I spoke about how much I paid and how much I lost so I think it was around about two or three thousand dollars Australian I lost on that bag so that's the biggest reason I regret selling it is because if I had kept it I definitely would have been able to um, recuperate more of my what I paid I probably would have only lost a thousand dollars Australian which is a lot better than two to three thousand dollars that's for sure um, or I could, because I still like the Chanel Trendy, no doubt about it, but I could have ended up like growing to love that color. I could have, because the bag itself is great. It was just the color that I was like, when I was in the store lighting and buying it, it looked different than when I was actually outside looking at it in sunlight. I'm like, this is not a real beige. But anyways, you know, what's done is done, but I do regret selling that bag, um, or at least I regret selling it at the time that I did. The fourth bag that I regret selling and I think this is probably my biggest regret. Um, yeah, it was the Birkin 25 and Rose Azalee. I know, I know why I sold it. Um, I sold it because it was a bright pink and I wasn't, I was in a stage in my life. I had given birth to my daughter. I got offered that bag, I think it was um, about six months after I gave birth to my daughter. Yeah, it was about six months after I gave birth to my, my first child and I wasn't confident in my body shape. I wasn't confident in how I looked because I still had mum bod. Um, I had put on quite a lot of weight in the first pregnancy and I was struggling to lose the weight as well. So even though I loved the color, it was a bright Barbie pink. It was really cute. Um, it didn't vibe with me because I felt like it made me stand out like a sore thumb. It made me look like a big flashing light with, like, like with this bright pink bag, like it was so eye catching. And I didn't feel confident in my body. I didn't feel confident in myself. I had also suffered from um, just, you know, some postnatal depression. I wouldn't say that it was anything severe, but I definitely did have some um, postnatal depression, unfortunately. And it kind of was still hanging around for, for six months. Into six months, I didn't start to feel better 
I pretty much didn't start to feel better until about eight months after giving birth. Like I was feeling fine, like it was manageable, it was okay, it's just that I wasn't feeling my best self. I wasn't, be, I, I wasn't able to be the best version of myself due to um, mental health with, with postnatal depression and giving birth and my um, body dysmorphia, I would say. How I would look at myself in the mirror, I would critically judge myself and was really harsh on myself. So yeah, that bag um, got, it, it was attention seeking. Everyone would look, like look at the bag and I was carrying it and I just didn't, it didn't correspond with my mental mind state at the time because I wasn't feeling my best self. So looking back, I wish I had kept that bag because I miss it. It was the first store offer I ever got from the store. Um, it had a great experience to go with it because my sales associate was fabulous. She was, out of everyone I've ever had, um, she probably was the best like there is another one that was really awesome but she was the best one i ever had she was my first one i clicked with her immediately we were the same age and um she'd come to australia from france and just had a really nice feeling to go with the bag and i miss that color i love rose azalee uh it, yes it's a bright color does it scare me if i ever were to add rose azalee back to the collection yes it definitely does it does scare me because it's a bright color and um, I am definitely a neutrals person, but uh, I definitely, yeah, I regret selling that bag because it ticked a lot of the boxes. I love the color. It had a nice experience with it, came from the store, nice sentiment with it. Um, it was in Swift and I love Swift. It was a Birkin 25. I love a Birkin 25. It's a cute bag. Um, and I now no longer have a Birkin 25. So I really regret selling that bag. I did make a profit on selling it. So at least I can look back and go, okay, well, you got more than your money back, you made a profit on it, um, and you do, I didn't have to spend much in store to even get that bag. I had, like I said, I had a fabulous sales associate, a fabulous sales associate. I really only, I think I only spent around about four to $5,000 with her and got offered such an elusive bag and color, size, everything, gold hardware, it was perfect. So I wish I could turn back time and not sell that bag. Even though I made a profit, I don't care about that. I wish I did not sell it. Uh, will I one day try to add it back to my collection if I can get it for the right price perhaps because I don't want to be paying like a hefty premium but then at the same time will it hold the same sentiment I don't know I have another friend um, on Instagram who also feels kind of the same way about when she sold her first bag so I know I'm not alone that some of us we make these rash decisions um, and we then later on down the track regret it I wouldn't say it was a rash decision, to be honest. I wouldn't say that. It, it was just more to do with my mental state of mind at the time, and, and that's why I sold it. But yeah, mm, pretty sad about that one when I talk about it. <laughs> what can I do? What's done is done. I know I went to a loving home. The lady that bought it was in Canada, and she absolutely loves it. She um, had problems even getting a bag at the boutique as well, So, and that was exactly the bag she wanted. So I'm glad I could make her happy. So I, I, I can at least I can live with that, knowing that I made someone else's dream come through come true someone else was able to be happy um, buying that bag from me so we'll just leave it at that <laughs> um, the final two bags that I regret selling and these technically I I don't really really regret selling them I don't really regret it I kind of just miss them I kind of miss them in a way and I've had to I had to sell them um, well, really, I had to sell them to go and fund other purchases because I decided I wanted a different bag. I decided I wanted um, that kind of spec or uh, it was a really an array of things. It was, it, it was also when I was very new to um, buying Hermes bags. Actually, let's just start with the first one that I'm gonna, gonna mention out of the two that I don't really 100% regret. Like, it's more like a technicality that I kind of regret them on. And the first one being the Kelly 28 and Trench. So the Kelly 28 and Trench, I had to sell that because what happened was I got the Birkin 25 and Rose Azalee offered from the boutique. And I wasn't expecting it because I had thought that it would take at least a good um, eight months to a year and more spending to be able to get a bag offered at the boutique. That's what I kind of expected. So I had actually bought the Kelly 28 in Trench because I thought nothing's coming. No way. I'm not going to get a bag anytime soon. So I had bought it in April of 2017. And then um, two months later, I got offered the Birkin 25 and Rose Azalee from the store. And I was like, oh man. <laughs> so um, 
I ended up selling the Kelly 28 inch wrench because I felt guilty that's two bags within a matter of a couple months very expensive bags I didn't I I just felt really guilty about it they were too close together in time and it left a, you know it just made me, it made me feel guilty you know um, my husband's not into luxury does he support my luxury um, passion yes and no like he does because he knows that I love it but at the same time he probably wishes that I would just go and buy bags from Kmart. Um, that's just the, just the truth of it. So obviously I have that guilt in my mind. I don't, you know, um, we're married, we're, we're a team. So <laughs> I had the guilt that I had two very expensive bags in my possession. So I ended up selling the Kelly 28 in trench. And the reason that I chose to sell that rather than selling the Burka 25 at the time was because the Kelly 28 in Trench um, was with gold hardware and it was a yellow undertone color. And I felt that the yellow trench undertone um, didn't really go with my skin tone. I just felt like it clashed a little bit because my undertones in my skin are yellow as well. So, um, but looking back, I think that if I still had that bag in my collection, I definitely would be able to rock that as a neutral. It would have worked fine. I think I was just being overcritical. Again, I think it had a lot to do with my mental state of mind. Like I said, body dysmorphia. I was very critical of myself. I wasn't confident. I didn't feel good about myself, how I looked, um, being a new mum. I was tired and I was adjusting to all that. So I think it was a lot to do with my mental state too, that I was like, no, nah, this I feel guilty and this bag doesn't suit me. Um, I can't keep both of these bags. So it was a matter of just, I had to let one go, unfortunately. But um, yeah, if money was no object, if yeah, money was no object and I didn't have that, I didn't have to have sort of guilt about having like, having two expensive bags, if I was a millionaire, billionaire, whatever, I definitely wouldn't have sold the Kelly 28. So I miss it, but don't, I don't really regret it per se. It's just kind of something that I, I miss and I wish I could have kept. Um, and then the next one is the Birkin 30 that I had in black Togo Palladium hardware. Now this is the one that I think to myself, um, I had this first, this was actually the bag, um, this was my second ever Hermes bag and I had it in my collection when I had been offered the Birkin 25 and Rose Azalee and I had already bought the Kelly 28 and Trench before the Birkin 25 and Rose Azalee. The Birkin 30, I had it. I already had the bag and I had it for quite some time. Um, and I enjoyed using it. I loved it. Actually, that's right. I sold it because I realized, yeah, we were doing some renovations at home. Um, sorry, I got hay fever as usual. Um, and I wanted to get a Kelly, a Kelly bag. I wanted to get a Kelly 32, like a bigger bag. So that's pretty much why I sold it. It was because I wasn't able to really utilize the Birkin 30 anymore once my daughter was getting older, starting to walk or re like wanting to walk, that sort of thing. I, and even pushing the pram, it was annoying carrying a Birkin 30. So that's why I sold it. But again, if money was no object, if I was able to keep absolutely pretty much every bag, um, obviously I probably would have if money was no object. They're not really regrets. They're kind of regrets like I wish I could have kept them because I do like a like I like them looking back I I would love if I still had them in my collection but things don't always pan out the way that you want to you don't always win the lotto and become a billionaire or a millionaire so multi-millionaire I should say because these days your house is already worth a million dollars anyway so um, at least in Australia it is so <laughs> I'm already technically a millionaire but I mean like a multi-millionaire um, yeah if if I won the lotto then I would just have lots of bags all around me. But it is what it is. So yes, those are the bags that I regret selling. It's quite obvious that my biggest regret is the Birkin 25 and Rose Azalee. Yeah. But I'd love to know, do you have any bag regrets selling, selling them? Yeah. <laughs> do you have any um, bags that you regret selling? Please let me know in the comments down below. I'd love to know what you regret selling so I don't feel like, um, really silly up here being totally openly honest i'm sure i will get some criticism or something something along the lines of well if you're poor why do you buy these bags well no i'm not poor obviously i can afford them but i can't afford to have 10 hermes bags that's for sure <laughs> but yeah whatever um if you like this video give it a thumbs up and i will see you guys in my next one bye